This is George Dion with Metal Express Radio, and I'm here with Tim Ripper Owens of the Three Tremors. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, if I knew absolutely nothing about the Three Tremors, uh, how would you describe the band's music to me? Uh, crazy, over the top, you know, right in your face. It's really a, a lot of, you know, it's got a little European metal kind of going, but it's a power metal, heavy metal, and uh, a lot of high singing, a lot of, you know, three singers just totally going full force, you know, for the, on this record. Absolutely, and of course the other two singers are Harry the Tyrant Conklin and Sean the Hell Destroyer Peck. Uh, before we get into the new album, I think with projects like these where there's three prominent guys, the band gets lost in the shuffle. So who is the band behind the Three Tremors? Well, you know, I'll tell you what, if people want to check, obviously the info's on, on the website, but also it's the band Cage, the current lineup to the band Cage, which Sean is in. So, uh, you know, uh, Sean the drummer is, is actually also in... K.K.'s Priest, I got him in K.K.'s Priest with us, uh, and Dave, uh, Dave Garcia on guitar, he really is, uh, you know, he, he does a lot of the engineering and, and writing, uh, Casey on guitar, uh, is a throwback to the, uh, to, uh, going back a ways, man, he looks like he's from the 80s, but it's a great lineup, and you could, you know, everybody can check them out, it's a, it's, it's such a great lineup that when I tour, do some do some dates like in the West Coast. I'll grab these fellows and have them be my backing band, also doing a solo tour. So, a great musician. So, awesome. And the new album comes out November fifth on Steel Cartel Records. It's called Crucifier. Uh, do the three of you write collectively, or does like everybody bring a song and then everybody kind of breaks it down how they want to work themselves into it? Well, with this one, uh, it's, you know, Sean Peck's baby. He's the one that came up with the idea. He, he called me one day. I was doing a lot of touring with other singers. Uh, Blaze Bailey and Udo and I did some, some bills. And Mike Mascara did some touring in South America. And in America, I did one with Blaze and Jeff Tate. So Sean was like, hey, let's do something with, with three singers, but let's do it, an original thing. Let's not do Let's not do something with that just does our back catalog. Let's do our own stuff. So uh, Sean did it. He writes these songs. He sends them to us, which is, you know, like the first record, we released solo versions. I would hope we do that on this one. And um, what's really cool is uh, when he sends us the music, I just sing the whole record. You know, we don't sing the parts like that comes out on the CD. We sing the whole, each singer sings the album in its entirety. And then Dave and, and Sean separate those into, you know, parts and who's doing what, you know. It does make it tougher to go on tour because the album comes out uh, Friday, I think. It comes out on the 5th. And, you know, when we recorded it, we just did the whole thing. So now we're trying to figure out what they have us singing on the record. So it makes it tough to learn the tour. <laughs> That's true. I can imagine that that's an issue. Uh, when you play a Three Tremor show, which you're starting a, the tour tonight, actually, in Connecticut, um, do you guys do any of your other projects' music, or do you s stick strictly to the Tremors material? Well, we did on the last tour, touring of the first record. We don't have it in the set list right now, but we do. Obviously, the guys know... Uh, some Judas like Burning Hell from my era Judas Priest because they backed me up they know a lot of Judas Priest songs because they backed me up solo so we can throw that into the set list if somebody starts yelling something or they want something we might do it but I think to start this tour off we're going to try and play the songs for both of our records and uh, maybe throw in like a, a, a special nod to Dio and do like Heaven and Hell or something is Crucifier sort of a concept record? Because I could kind of see a theme here uh, developing through the song titles and the lyrics. Yeah, you know, um, the, the thing is, the, the, album's, the album's actually called Guardians of the Void. Oh, why did I write down the wrong thing? Well, Sorry, man. Because <laughs> you, I'll tell you why, which is it's still okay, to be honest, is you wrote that down because that's the title of the of the video we just released oh good <laughs> yeah so that that is and uh it's really you know what though this this record 
um, it's a little bit about everything, George. It's really about, it's got all kinds of, you know, Sean is really in the sci-fi and he's in the comic book stuff and he's into history. So the lyrics he writes is, is, is kind of all over the place, really. You know, you got a song in there about the Bin Laden when it got him and you, uh, you got a little bit of everything on there. You know, you got uh, Kryptonian steel. So it's really, it hits, it hits everything. I, I lyrically write more every day, which is kind of cool. Cause if, if I ever do write lyrics on this stuff, I write more what's going on in the world, what's going on in life, you know, pick yourself up. Things will be good. All kinds of, you know, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, so it's, uh, this one's a little bit about everything. You got some unique uh, promotional things going on with the album. You have a bunch of different merch packages with altering uh, album art, T-shirts, vinyl colors. You can kind of mix and match those things. Kind of goes into the whole sci-fi comic book kind of thing. Um, is that something that Sean came up with, or is that something that Steel Cartel comes up with? Sean did, and Sean's the leader of Steel Cartel as well. So <laughs> it's, it's his thing. No, he really comes up with great packages. It's, it's, uh, you know, that's why I always say this is over the top. This is right at you. I mean, the artwork, everything is done to the max. You know, the songs, the singing, the artwork. Uh, he really goes all out. And, and yeah, when you go to the Three Trimmers, well, there's uh, uh, great packages available with all kinds of stuff from, from, trading you know not only the, the revolving different type of al album covers but trading cards and socks and just great packages and, and that's the thing it's marketed like you know when your favorite bands and you watch people market like iron maiden and and all these bands who to uh do the same thing that's what you do it's a throwback to the 80s you know it's like let's let's throw this merch out there and do it i'll tell you how things change so much in time on this tour, I have merch that I'm selling, my, my own merch, and I have, like, my own branded coffee, and my, my girlfriend started a candle company, so I have this Ripper Owens candle that's got like leather scent. So as you get older, you realize mer merchandise is, is cool things that fans like. Uh, absolutely, especially, uh, I mean, I don't know much about younger fans, but I know me in my 40s that I kind of enjoy the going back to when I was younger, when you could hold the product and see the product and also hear the product. It's exactly right, you know, and and going home with, with other things, you get the album, it changes, you hold it, and then you get to have some other, you know, trading cards or, like I said, even if it's at my age, I mean, if I went in and somebody selling something and I saw that they had a band, that a candle that's, that, you know, and they had a, you know, the trading cards or, or coffee, I, that's the stuff I would get, you know, and the product. I'd be walking back with that, you know, so it's kind of, it is the throwback. And I think young people like it too. I think they've gotten used to getting whatever they want. In the world of Amazon, people want everything. So I think even when they come to the show, they love to go back with, with something a little different. Uh, absolutely. And you know, and you do realize on this this release, it's not it's not going to be streamed. It's there's no streaming available. No, no Spotify, no Apple Music streaming. It's only you can only buy it. You know, so uh, that's the big one. You can only buy the the hard copies. So Sean decided this is the way he's going to do this one. He's not going to do the streaming. That was actually what I was going to touch upon next is that in keeping with kind of the old school vibe, it's not going to be streaming. Just the videos would be available streaming. Um, you've done something like that in the past with a different band, um, Leviathan Project, where they only released a cassette of their album. Yeah, yeah. And that, and, and, you know, and that stuff's slowly coming out. It's, a, it's fun doing a Leviathan Project. It's been a great time doing that. And, uh, but that's the same thing. It's kind of old school. You know, how many people can, that's, you know, funny. I have nothing to play a cassette on. <laughs> I hardly have anything to play a CD <laughs> on anymore, to be honest. I don't, I think the only CD player I have is in my car and that's it. You know, I don't even have a CD player. So I always, what, what I would do is buy the CD, probably put it in my computer and move it to my iTunes. I'm a big person of buying music on iTunes uh, I'm not a streamer, though. I don't stream music, but I buy so much more music on iTunes than I ever would. But it's good when you do this. It's like, listen, why why not? You know, most record labels would never go for this. Um, there's no way they would release a record without streaming record labels. But 
when you're in Sean's position and it's your record label, uh, you can do it. Well, I think with the with the record companies that they probably get the higher cut off the streaming than they would get off the physical product, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but they're definitely making out with the streaming uh, more than the artists. You know, it's really it it makes sense. I mean, you have to put it out there in streaming sometimes, but it it makes sense not to sometimes. If more bands would start doing this, maybe things would change. The band's name, The Three Tremors, is kind of a riff off The Three Tenors. I was curious if any of those guys had heard uh, of this band. Like, if you have no. you ever heard, like, in passing, that Pavarotti or Domingo or the other guy, as Seinfeld calls him, uh, has heard of you guys? No. Uh, well, I think Pavarotti's dead, so if he's heard it, we're really in trouble. He might uh, have, though, on the other side, of course. Yeah, well, he, that's probably, we're, we're probably going to hear it that way more than if he's alive. But, um, you know, we, this was originally an idea years ago. Almost everybody knows this, that uh, Rob Halford, Bruce Dickinson, and Jeff Tate, and then even Ronnie James Deal was involved. They were going to do the Three Tremors. They actually put that name out there saying they were going to do something. This was probably 20 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, they never did anything, you know. They they got together and did like a song on stage once, but they never trademarked the name. They never put anything out. So Sean was like, "Man, that name's out there. I'm bu-. he he owns the rights to the name and said, let's do it.' You know. So we've never heard we've never really heard from the three trimmer guys that started the thing, and we never heard from the three tenors. So uh, <laughs> the, only, the only people we'll probably hear from is the three stooges. You, you might. They're, they're dead, too, but uh, you might. Yeah, we'll see. Anybody's going to come get us are coming from the grave anyways. That's right. You wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I think that it's funny, the the whole Halford thing. I remember when it was said, and you're right, it was 20 years ago, and it was just a passing thing. They were on a tour together, so why wouldn't they? I think it was just to promote the tour, push the tour, but that thing had life. No, it would have been great. And that's when people go, oh, you took it. That, there already was one. It's like, well, there really wasn't. I mean, they just talked about it. If there was one, they would have had a website domain. They would have actually trademarked the name. I mean, and, you know, Sean's not dumb. The first thing he did was he looked and he's like, look, the name's still there. No one even owns the name or trademarked the name. Or so he's like, boom, I got it. It's mine. And you know what? To be honest, all fairness, if they called and said, hey, we are going to do something now. Sean would have no problem saying, okay, go ahead. You have the name. Use the name. Even though Sean owns it, he'll probably get paid for it. <laughs> it's an investment. Yeah. Uh, you start your tour today, as we discussed. Um, you got any, I mean, obviously, you're a, you've are you been a performer for years, but, I mean, being off the road and getting back out there, there's got to be a little bit of stage fright creeping in? Well, I, really more of... of trying to learn these new songs i mean it's not normal songs where you just learn the whole song you have you have you got to learn your part like i said earlier so we and we have you know i didn't rehearse with the band and and either did harry because harry lives in greece the band's from san diego and we're starting on the east coast where i'm at so uh we're gonna go into the fire we're gonna have a meeting after these uh interviews i'm doing and go over the songs but uh uh, you know, I've been doing some shows solo. I did, you know, three or four on the East Coast on a run. I did North Carolina. I did uh, uh, San Diego and L.A. a couple weeks ago. But this is a different beast. You know, we have six, seven shows in a row, a day off, six or seven shows in a row. So it really gets, uh, yeah, I, you know, in my mind, I think, am I ready for this? And this is a lot of high singing. It's a lot more high singing than I do on my normal stuff. This is... This is something to fit this project and not really what I usually do the whole time. So it's, uh, there's a little nerves getting ready to get a couple shows. I, once I get a couple shows in, I'll be fine. Have you run into any problems putting this tour together sort of in a post-lockdown world? Well, Sean's doing, I don't think he's had too bad of a problem. You know, I mean, there's a couple venues uh, that I've read. Some fans have contacted me and said, hey, you shouldn't play there because... It, you know, you have to have a vaccine to go in there, and I, and I you know, that's about it. Uh, fortunately, I'm I'm vaccinated, so I don't have to worry about going into a place like that. Um, but it, you know, it, I I don't know what's going on with it, and uh, you know, I think some of these venues are okay. You know, I do I do, you know, what's going to be strange is I got to try not to 
go out and, and I know people will probably get mad at me, probably even my bedrooms, but I'm not going to go hang out with people and after the show and and do meet and greets unless it was a controlled meet and greet where they bring one person in at a time because, you know, it's still out there and, and uh, hopefully everything is going to run smooth. I don't, I think Sean's been able to put this tour together pretty good. These are smaller venues, but sometimes it's easier. Right. Right. I would imagine that that's one of the huge things that, that has changed about touring is the more of the interaction. And hopefully as we progress forward, we're all going to be able to hang out again at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the middle, well, not really in the middle, but just prior to the three Tremors release that you have coming out, uh, you appeared on K.K. Priest's debut album, Sermons of the Sinner. A fantastic album, by the way. I think that a lot of fans are going to be surprised at the... Uh, the quality, the way that it came out, and I think that a lot of people were expecting one thing, and they got something original. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks a lot. I, uh, it's a great record. It's a great band. We got a great lineup, and you know, when when KK called and said, "Hey, let's do this thing," and you know, it's it, it sounds like KK Downing to me. You know, that's people's like, "What well, kind of sounds like Judas Priest?" And I'm like, "Well, no, no shit." I mean, <laughs> it's it's KK. Downing has written Judas Priest songs. He, he was the founding member of Judas Priest, and that's all he's ever written. You know, and it's a great record. It really is. Out of the box, it's really, uh, you know, it's what needed to be done. It's a perfect, straightforward, heavy metal record uh, that sounds like K.K. Downing wrote it, and that's what needed to be done. Uh, absolutely. Uh, are you going to be touring with them at, at some point, or is that just not in the cards, really? Well, I think so because it's really a band. It's not even a project; more of a band. And and uh, but we just, it's a bigger it's a bigger deal, isn't it? You know, it's it's bigger stages, bigger production. So it has to be done right, and it's going to take a lot longer to get it in the works. I think in the meantime, maybe we'll we'll work on writing a new record. So when we're done touring, I look to start touring probably close to the middle of summer, maybe or somewhere in that time, or the beginning of summer, maybe the beginning of summer. Uh, really don't know but definitely we'll hit the road and do stuff excellent uh, is there any future work on the Dio's Disciples album I haven't heard anything I, I don't know it sounds like it was probably shelved I mean everybody's so busy obviously I'm <laughs> I can't be any busier I'm, I'm just constantly recording and recording and recording and like you said Leviathan Project I also have uh, I also have the um uh, a band called Pyramid coming out uh, that's a progressive metal band and I have this other uh, record I recorded called Engineered Society Project and it's awesome it's kind of like Dio so you know hopefully a Dio Disciple will release a record or, or write a record but uh, at this point I haven't heard anything uh, how about, I, I could probably ask you questions all day about projects that you're on. You're definitely very busy. Uh, you announced one not too long ago, Project Rock, with Kotak and Kerry Kelly and Rudy Sarzo. And, uh, is that going to move into something, or has that kind of been pushed aside for all the other stuff you got? Well, we on? released the record. Uh, we, we changed the name to A New Revenge. Okay. And uh, and it's fantastic. We released it actually at the same time Three Tremors released their, their first record. And it was probably one of the best reviewed records that I've, I've done, that, that A New Revenge. And uh, it's more it's more of a straightforward, hard rock, rocking kind of record. Uh, a New Revenge is the name. And yeah, Kotek and, and uh, Kerry Kelly. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's a really great record. And you... Had charred walls of the damned up until 2016. Has that is that anything going to move on that? Well, if if Richard did, wants to write some and go to the studio, I mean, I I enjoy really good material. The last record was my favorite out of the three I've done with him, and uh, it just depends if if uh, Richard has time to do it or wants to do it. I mean, it's Richard Christie's baby, and um, but it's a very well received record. I mean, we have tons of fans and and tons of people love it. So hopefully, we will do something. Is there anything else that you're working on that I missed? <laughs> oh, God only knows. I've done so much. <laughs> you know, what, because of COVID, uh, I've constantly worked on stuff. I mean, that that Pyramid record, which is fantastic, I actually recorded even, and it all started with me asking to do one song, and then I did a whole record 
And then I recorded the whole record again after that that he's going to release next year. So, but you know, people send me songs from all over the world, and I and I work on this material nonstop. And and uh, COVID really made that happen because usually I wouldn't do that. But uh, yeah, there's you know, I guess anybody ever wants any info on me, the best is just to check my websites or social media pages. Absolutely, I would imagine that the. Um Lockdowns have been good for your voice, too, not constantly being on the road and not constantly singing. Well, I thought I really needed to rest my voice. I need to totally take time off. And I could have done that if we're touring, to be honest, because then you could come home and take a couple weeks off and rest the voice. But unfortunately, since that didn't happen, I, I spent a lot more time in the studio. So I actually probably sang more because that's how I had to make my living was in the studio. So I never... You know, I'd go, I would say, okay, I got to shut my voice down for even a week. But then the next day, I would get an email saying, can you sing this song? So I would be like, okay. So uh, I really didn't shut it down at all. <laughs> well, uh, I saw that you're also on Cameo. Have you gotten any uh, crazy requests for people to do anything? No, I mean, I, I would love to get some where I, you know, break up with somebody or something like that. Um, <laughs> I get most of them are. Or like I hate you, or any of those. But I haven't gotten any of those. They're almost all cheer. You know, happy birthdays, obviously, or happy anniversaries, or just to cheer people up. You know, some people are have got bad news, and and they want their buddies to be cheered up. So it's it's really fun. I, I enjoy doing them. I usually do them right before or after I walk into the gym. So I'm always in like my car in my sweat clothes. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I love doing them, and I usually make them worth it. Sometimes I realize I'm, I'm already I like I'm talking for three or four minutes on these things, and you know, you watch the other ones and they're really quick, and mine just goes forever. <laughs> that's good. You get more bang for your buck with with yeah, Rick Owens, right? I enjoy it, and people get a good one. Absolutely. Uh, the new album is Guardians of the Void. I got it right this time. It's yes. the Three Tremors. Uh, Tim, thanks for speaking with Metal Express Radio today. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having me. And you know what? Just uh, have everybody out there just look look on our pages to see the tour dates and see if we're coming to a, a city near you and come out and hang out. Yeah, absolutely. The, the album's great. I, I listened to it this week. It uh, sounds awesome. I, I, I wish you the best of luck with it. All right. Thanks, man. Take care, Tim.